Full time at the Munster final here in Killarney where Kerry have won 422 to 1-9 against Cork. Mike Quirk, you were watching the game for off the ball. Your thoughts on that game we saw there today? Yeah, it was really impressive from Kerry. Um, you know, outside of a really lackluster first quarter, I think they really got the grips of the game, got the grips of what Cork were doing and the pace they were bringing to it. Uh, and really imposed themselves in the game thereafter and, and had all the big personalities for the next three quarters of the game. Uh, I think they had 13 or 14 different scores, vast majority of their you know, scores kicked from play. It was real free-flowing stuff, but they brought a different intensity after the, you know, that first quarter break and, and their tackling and their, their you know, winning back the ball really went up to another level that, that Cork just couldn't live with thereafter. And I think they went something like 3-10 to a point between the two water breaks and, and that kind of underscored the, the dominance that Kerry enjoyed during that period. What were Cork doing in the first quarter that saw them so far on top? Like they went in at the water break, I think one five to three points up. So for you, what were Cork doing right in that first quarter? Yeah, I th defensively, I thought they were really, really good. They looked really athletic and really pacey, which we know they are. Uh, and Kerry were probably sloppy in possession themselves at times. They created a couple of half goal chances, but never really, never really capitalised and took it. Um, and thereafter, they just tidied up all those things. They stopped turning over the ball. They put a big, big squeeze on Cork's kickouts. Uh, you know, pushing 15 men into Cork's 65, including the goalkeeper Shane Ryan, which was a really interesting thing to see. Uh, and Kerry really squeezed that kick out. And, and you know, down the line, Cork obviously replaced me all Martin, their goalkeeper at half time. Not sure it was an injury or what it was. Uh, the situation didn't really improve thereafter, and, and that was Kerry's platform for, for the win, really. They, they strangled their kick out, did well on their own, and with the forwards that Kerry have, even without David Clifford having you know, any kind of a, a massive impact offensively, you know, they still ran out very, very comfortable winners. I can't believe we're saying this, but David Clifford got one point today, which was, which was from a free. Like, mm. if you came in thinking that David Clifford wouldn't score from play today, People would have laughed at you. Like, where, yeah. how? Like, first of all, how good was Sean Meehan today on David Clifford? Yeah, I thought he was obviously Cork's best player by a long way. And from early on, from the very first ball to the very last ball, he was hugely competitive with him. Didn't give him a yard. David's point was it was a free that that he didn't win himself. So uh, it was a really, really outstanding performance by Sean Meehan. But there probably wasn't enough Sean Meehans in that Cork team, and and it's probably a, you know an even more positive sign of of Kerry that they can put up such a big score and have so many different scores contributing and win by such a margin without having possibly the best forward in the country really contributing more you know than, than a point from a free so uh, I, I think Kerry look at that as a positive and and whoever is marking David Clifford in the next game you know it's not going to be something that they're going to look forward to because he's obviously going to look to bounce back from what might be his first championship game without scoring from play. For Kerry not to have to rely on David Clifford one of the Cliffords really stood up today, Potty Clifford. I know you were very impressed with him today. What exactly was it he did today that made Kerry tick? Everything. He is a bit of everything. He's got, you know, he's a fabulous kick passer. You know, he loves to take on a man and go by him. He's hugely unselfish. Still finished with three points himself. He was back there winning breaks. He was tackling in his own defensive, you know, 21, uh, but has the pace and the energy and the athleticism to get up and down the field. and and really affect the game offensively in that final third as well. So I think he's been the big piece that Kerry have found this season and, and playing him at centre forward and you know naming it corner forward and coming out the field and giving him that kind of free role has allowed Sean O'Shea and other guys to become more you know more focused on scoring and, and, and more focused on doing damage inside in that offensive third. So uh, I think he's been a big part and he was he was outstanding today from start to finish as many of the Kerry fellas were to be fair. Sean O'Shea and you know, a lot of guys really stood up and played really well. Like Paul Gain, he came back and, and looked like a sharp scorer that he that he was. He's played most of his football inside today, whereas he had been out the field in previous games. So, but from Kerry's perspective, you know, outside of that first quarter where they, I'm sure they learned a little bit about you know some defensive frailties. Other than that, it's been a really positive afternoon. Are you surprised at how well Paddy has came into this Kerry setup? It's, it's his first year with the with the squad and starting. Are you surprised in any way how good he settled in? No, not really. I, I, like we've been watching him. Like I, I was managing Kerns rallies and we played East Kerry, and I've seen him for for a good number of years playing with East Kerry, and and uh, he's been that good. Now he he looks like his skills have improved even a little bit more with his kicking and everything else. But no, he was he was always a really really dynamic ball player who had loads of football a bit of bite about him loves a tackle loves a break loves that ugly side of the game as much as the as the you know 50 yard kick pass that he sprayed over the shawnee shade that led to paul Gainey's first goal in the first half so or in the second half excuse me so he's got he's got it all but um physically he looks like he's come on a lot and 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 has no problem dealing with the the robust nature of of the physicality in the county football 
in terms of Munster finals, Michal, you've seen plenty, you've played in plenty. Where will this one rank down the years to come? Uh, probably not very highly in terms of a spectacle, obviously, from Kerry's perspective. You know, if you were in the ground, in the ground this evening or, or you were watching it at home, you'd be delighted with that, obviously, because it means you're a step closer to challenging for an All-Ireland and you were after winning silverware. You've, have, you've maintained a record, which Kerry have, of, of not losing a championship game in this ground since 1995. And nobody wants to be the first team to, to, to lose that record. Uh, so, the, you know, it was, it was very, very positive. But I think this won't last too long in the memory of, of Kerry or, or certainly not for Cork people. From a manager's point of view, obviously, you were with Leash for the last two years. Peter Keane, what will he be taking away from, from this game where Kerry really need to learn going into that All-Ireland semi-final? Yeah, I think the, you, you obviously focus on that first 20 minutes or so and, and how exposed they were in the back line and how sloppy they were offensively with the turnovers they had. They didn't win enough of their own kickouts in that period. So that's the period they'll focus on and, and try and take learnings from and, and work on. And, and there were plenty during that time because Cork were hugely competitive and, and looked like they were going to be in it and sustain their, their performance for a long time. But um, I think the way Kerry turned it around and, and really grew into the game and, and dominated the kickouts and, and started to get their handling right and really became smooth in the, in the attacking third, I think that's, that's obviously a big positive. But for, for Peter and the management, Obviously, they'll be looking at the other side of it and the things that they can improve on. Today's results, like 422 to 19, it's hard to believe, like a Munster final seeing that score. Is that a bad result for Munster football for the future? Like this Kerry team, they're a young team, quality players. Look, Cork have a lot of good underage players there, but for Munster football, are we looking at Kerry going on a long, long period here of dominance? I'm not sure. I, I, it's hard to know. I mean, you look during the week and Cork under 20s obviously beat beat Kerry, Cork Miners, you know, or sorry, the, the Kerry Miners were beaten in all Ireland final by, by by Derry, but the Cork Miners are out again this weekend. They're always competitive with, with Kerry. They're, 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 you know, under 20s won in all Ireland last year, the year before under Keith Ricken. They're obviously going in the right direction. I think for them, that's, that's where they have to keep going and keep building and um, to, to get back to being as competitive as they were during the noughties against Kerry when, when you know there was eight wins by Kerry in that time but there was also five draws and plenty of them that Cork could have could have won at the death here including the Fionn Fitzgerald one where he kicked the point late, late on in 2015 I think it was but um, it's probably not a great sign of, 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 uh, of Munster but if you look at it the gap between the Kerrys and the Dublins and, and everybody else the Mayos possibly are in that bracket as well it's a it's a pretty sizable gap really and and I mean it's fine talking about competition structures and all that but it's it's about you know finding ways to help these other counties and and uh, resourcing them properly and giving them the tools and the structures that they need to keep developing at underage level and try and try and bring those players through to the senior because you're not going to fix it in a, in a year or two. The Kerry midfield for you, David Moore, and obviously is is a key part of that. Jack Barry. Dermot O'Connor now, we know Dermot picked up an injury there. But for you, what's Kerry's best midfield partnership? Yeah, well, it's it's obviously they've gone with Dermot, o, Dermot O'Connor this year. And I, I, I like Dermot as a, as a footballer. He's he's obviously not, you know, he's, he's still only a young lad and his body is probably not as, you know, as far down the line as as, uh, as they would like. But I think in a football sense, he has everything that you could possibly want. Do, both feet, he's a scorer, he's got great pace, he's a good kick passer. Uh, again, like you know, loves a break. is is a physical kind of a guy. Whereas Jack Barry, even though he got two points today, he'd be seen as as the guy to maybe mark an Ian Maguire to mark a Brian Fenton, who does a good job defensively on on those types of players. Uh, but I think it's Dave Moran's kick passing and and his leadership in that area that you know you saw it there even in the second quarter when Kerry were 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 coming back into the game. He kicks a point. He wins a couple of kickouts. The stuff that's unglamorous, those thirty yard kick passes, you know, where it just treads the play and keeps the ball moving along. It doesn't seem to stop with him, and, and that's a big part of Kerry's attack, the fluency that comes through the middle of the field. Um, but whether it's Dermot or Jack, I think you'd be you'd be pretty confident in, in both of them doing a good job either side of Dave. For Kerry now, they're awaiting the Ulster champions, Tyrone or Monaghan. For you, who do you think Kerry would prefer going into that semi-final? I don't think they'd be overly, you know, bothered by it. I, th I think, you know, with the, with the players they have and the squad they have together, not to say that they'd win the game easily, but I, I think they have enough to focus on themselves and, and not get, you know, overly concerned about who they'd be playing. They look at that first 20 minutes and look at the trouble they were in their full back line. Look at the way that Brian Hurley was able to skip past Jason Foley and kick a couple of scores, um, including the goal. 
and look at ways that they can solve those kind of problems. If any team gets a run of them, whether that be Monaghan or Tyrone, Corker or, or, or whoever else down the line. Um, so that'll be their focus, obviously, and, and, and maintain what they have offensively, get David Clifford more involved in the game because you don't want you don't want to be going through too many 70 minutes where David Clifford's not scoring from play. So again, I, like the opponent for Kerry, I'm sure, won't be a real big focus for him. It'll be, it'll be how can we really tidy up the small little bits and pieces that weren't so smooth today. And finally here, uh, Michael, look, depending on who you're listening to, you might have a few people saying this Kerry team are now the front runners to win the All-Ireland. Now, depend, that's depending on who you're hearing from. I, for me personally, Dublin are still there. They're yeah. still number one. Do you think that's the way? Unless, like, until someone knocks out Dublin, yeah. Kerry are still number two, number three. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Look, I mean, Dublin, until you've seen Dublin beaten, you, you're not going to rule against them. And, and obviously, Kerry looked like they have they have pushed on from where they were last year, even the year previous to that. Uh, they look like they have a lot of really, really good footballers, a lot, uh, especially at the top end of the field offensively. They look like their bench has got an awful lot stronger. And, and, and they can come on and really impact the game. And you look at Dublin and you say, yeah, okay, well, they've lost a lot of players, really, really high quality players, including the Cluxton situation this year, which looks like he's not going to be playing championship. And, and that Cluxton situation would be interesting if you can get them to a five or 10 minute period, you know, by the end of the game where the game is tight, that experience and that, that calmness that he brings to their play obviously wouldn't be there. And, and that could be a, a kind of a crucial thing down the line. But look, for me, it's, it's still Dublin until they're beaten. And, and uh, but Kerry look better placed than ever to, to be the ones that, that, that drive them the closest.